that time and that music? I mean, were you aware of, of that history of music in the family? Um, yeah, we would have been very aware of it growing up. Um, like, you know, we've seen many photos and heard old demos and stuff like that. Like, just out of my own interest as well. I mean, you know, you wonder what your parents did when they were younger and all that. So it's you know, you never pushed it on us. Like, it was never like, you know, I was in a band too. We kind of, if we asked, we'd say, well, yeah, like this and that. You know, it wasn't one of those bands that you were like, you know, we're chasing how you're doing it. Yeah, right. I did not do it all the time when I was younger. Yeah. Now it's from our own uh, curiosity mm. we delved into things like that. Yeah. And uh, were you surprised then at, at the response you got to your music? I mean, uh, obviously, you, you got a break at the right time, uh, mm. but you got it because, because of the music, because of what you were doing. You know what I mean? There's much of the hard work as well. Like, we were quite surprised that the type of music that it is isn't normally known for being massively successful. And, uh, so, yeah, I think it was hard work we put into it, yeah, we'll obviously come back and Stuff, but it's just kind of nice to be like a, a, a little show under their own banner. Yeah, yeah no, it's like, you know, it would be a surprise to anybody that it's something that we just started doing when we were young for a bit of fun and for it to turn into something you do full time. You know, and you're it's fortunate enough to be able to do that with your life at this age as well. And it's, yeah. it's incredible. What, what has Cabin meant to you over the years? I don't know. <laughs> I know, um, but it's, it's a cold world, like, every time we go away we all look forward to coming back to Cabin and whatever it is, it's probably obviously that we live here and our friends and family and others are here, but um, there is a charm to the place and we always say when we go away that like, culturally the country is well above its weight with the trans art, you know, the music on the weather and there's, there's always something going on at Cabin and it's well worth seeing. Um, yeah, it's, you know, home for us and so like, you know, whenever we're away, it's, the pull of home is always very strong and it's, you know, we're all still based in Cabin and, you know, that's the way to be for the particular feature, it's you know, how we feel like we belong. How did um how did Elton John pronounce Cabin? Cabin. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't to know. You know, how yeah. would he know? Yeah. 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 He never yeah. heard of my yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, he didn't hear my name. <laughs> uh, I might get it here yet. What was it like, you know, being on shows like Letterman? It was that sort of like great old buzz uh, Like that would have been incredible, yeah. That was uh, on our Second trip to America, we did Letterman, and it was one of those surreal moments. It, it always goes by in a blur when you do something like that, but it was all kind of done uh, in the morning, sort of thing. We pre recorded early in the day, so you're kind of like, you know, in the sort of flurry of doing it and sound checking, and then you get ready and you go on, and then suddenly you're out on the street and thinking, could we just do David Letterman there? But, you know, it's one of those moments, it's like you look back on it. To add to the New Yorkness of it as well, David Frick, head writer, Rolling Stone, was with us. So it was amazing, yeah, it's one of those things when you say it, you're like, we actually did do that, yeah. And it, it is kind of like sort of to look around and see yourselves, uh, Issa O'Neill, uh, Oli Cannon now, this, mm. this big surge in music yeah. out, of, out of this landscape. Fantastic, and what we like about it as well, it's not, it has 